so hello and welcome back to this channel welcome to my channel welcome to this new video that we're going to be looking at all about whether you should be running a different kind of setup uh, when it comes to racing the car as opposed to setting a fast lap so that depends on whether you're posting a qualifying lap and then you're running a completely different setup for the actual race so we're just looking over the settings that i'm going to be using for this 10 minute race session that I'm going to be running here at Valencia in the new 1.9 2.0 version of the game a few little changes probably just a few uh, patches here and there but nothing major no major changes so you can see we're just using uh, a setup that I used uh, for my last XCL race at Valencia in the GT4 class I'm just quickly looking over the setup that I used now one thing that really did come from uh, running this setup was just as much as it was very competitive on the night and I managed to pick up second place in both uh, races both 15 minute races I just wasn't really able to push the car enough to be able to challenge um, for first place obviously we've got one really good overtaking opportunity which is the long start finish straight and there are a few other little areas that you could overtake but these all depend on whether you're, um, the driver that you're racing against has made um, some small mistakes or not. So just uh, starting out the race then, just changing the tyres as per normal, just to make sure that... Um, Low tire pressure, stay away yeah, we're not going to... We can see what damage is available if we do take any damage. Um, we're not going to change tyres when we come into the pitch, so just trying to get the tyres slightly warm on the run up to the start finish straight. Trying to get online with this uh, beautiful Maserati alongside me here, number 87 car. I'm just trying to keep level pegging with him. Maybe I should have been in second gear for this start, but lights away and we're off. So racing up to turn one, you can see we're not making much headway at all. The, the Maserati alongside us was pulling away slightly and so was pretty much every other car. Obviously, we've got a lot going on around us, definitely making good use of that radar. Definitely uh, something that I've seen a couple of other people not particularly using the radar. We've got, uh, <laughs> we've got another car on his two wheels there. Fantastic, manages to hold that. But um, yeah, let's settle into this uh, race now. So just behind the AMG uh, Mercedes, another car that runs really well here the AMG not really spent any time um, and forget what they are the Corvettes I've not really tried any running here in them but they seem obviously line astern just up ahead it seem to be running pretty well but obviously just a little bit further ahead we've got two I think we've got two Ginettas and another KTM um, but the KTM really does run well here it's got brilliant traction out the corners it feels nice and tight through some of these um, sharper corners and it just feels like a really nippy engine uh, really good fun the combination Valencia and the KTM really I, I've enjoyed doing this video I've enjoyed the race that I had on Wednesday night um, hopefully taking part in this coming Wednesday's race but you see we've got a little run up here on the the Mercedes just pulling along the inside of him trying to get that place under braking into the last corner and hopefully we can hold it down this start finish straight as you can see from the setup that I'm running, it's heavily um, it's heavily hit with downforce. We're running a full nine um, on the downforce at the rear of the car, so it really is a draggy car. But we've got loads of uh, downforce, so you can see he's just making marks, just thinking I need to cover off the inside line always very wary of the AI under braking they can often give you a little tap at the rear which probably isn't unlike real life at all so always trying to <coughs> keep the momentum in these cars the GT4 cars something that you should really consider when uh, moving to GT3 cars and something that is worth learning from the GT4 class is carry momentum through a corner all that momentum that you carry through the corner is potential acceleration as you come out the other side of the corner so maintaining a good apex speed is it really is probably one of the differences between good drivers and the not so good drivers is being, being able to carry a high speed 
um, or carrying more apex speed through the corner because they're able to maintain more momentum whether that's late braking into the corner and carrying more brake more speed into the corner itself or either braking a little bit earlier for the corner so that you can actually get on the power earlier there are all these little um, I guess skills that we amass over time and a lot of it is from the brake pedal using the brake pedal m most efficiently to um, carry as much speed through the corner as we can so you can, you can you can see as we come across the line there um, a lot of the drivers ahead of us are into the 139s now on the night I think during the race I was the only I would say only person to post the 139 um, but there weren't many guys per posting 139s well racing here with the AI on 100% every single car ahead of me is posting a 139 if not lower 139 threes 139 twos i'm sure during one of these races uh, there's a 139 dead but we'll get, we'll move on to that as we progress but as you can see in the top left corner we're on for a 139.7 139.6 so we're starting to build some temperature in the tires and you can see the front left tire uh, really struggling to reach temperature I think when I come actually come back to the pits uh, during setting this car up the temperature was around 50 to 60 degrees on that front left tire but there really is nothing I can do with it at all the car must be so rigid um, that it's not allowing the car to um, really make best use of its tires it's almost like we're driving with three tires on the car so braking just a little bit before um, you enter this corner just to allow the car to carry more momentum you sort of braking early to accelerate earlier <coughs> so again as we come down the start finish straight this is really predominantly where we need to be up really nice and close to the car ahead of us so across the line then for a 139.5 139.8, 139.5 all the cars ahead of us so we really need to be looking for 139s if you're looking at using the AI at 100%. I think I've got them set at 100% skill level, 92% aggression. Just to take some of that um, aggression away and actually notice that you're actually on circuit. If you set them at 100% aggression, they can just crash into you like you're not even there. So a lot of these corners are really wanting to carry as much momentum through the corner as we can. And like, again, like I'm saying, and keep iterating, it's so important to keep the car rolling. As, as obviously you can see there, loads of um, over rotation from the car, um, and that's something that you can see just down in the bottom right hand corner. I've got the brake balance set 54%, but well, that is a slight. Um, I'm trying to think of the word. A slight mistake I think on my part, I think midway through this I do actually swap the brake balance to 55 uh, which was my preferred brake balance for the KTM. So we're just braking early, trying to clip some of that first kerb not to allow the car to run too wide and pick up a trap in its penalty. But we really aren't making any headway on this battle to try and pick up fifth place. As much as it's an enjoyable run, we always want to be gaining. And the tyre pressures for me are just a tiny bit hot. Obviously we're into 1.9, def definitely into 1.9.2.0 oh, and I'd probably be looking at a 26.8 PSI all around is really what I'm looking for these days. 27 would really be my maximum, 27.0. Oh. I don't really want to be seeing 27.1, 27.2. Um, so not particularly the best range for the tyres at the minute well, as much as it's very hard to um, get these tyres working so that they're all working the same especially that front left tyre but really enjoying the races at XCL especially these Wednesday night battles in the GT4 class a couple of really good drivers uh, really pushing me to my limits really enjoyed the weekend's uh, hot lap session at Kailami in the new Ferrari also trying out the Lamborghini setting a 141.4 in the Lamborghini and finally a 141 dead really in the, in the Ferrari 
the Ferrari just seems to nail sector two. But coming back to the racing here as we come down to the last lap of the race, I think. Obviously, we're just we're just no further ahead. Still maintaining that fifth place, and that's the problem when you when it comes to setting a fast lap. The lap might very well be competitive in um, a qualifying session, but in a qualifying session you're not looking to overtake anybody. You're just trying to get the absolute maximum out of the car and if certain tracks dictate like um, Bathurst, you've got two massive long straights where the majority of the overtaking is going to be where it takes place on the straights. This really annoying audio issue that not just myself have been picking up on as well. Unfortunately, it's not stayed with us. Um, but yeah, I've got my audio set to uncompressed stereo. And when I am recording data now, I, I do make sure I unplug and plug in my uh, external hard drive when capturing footage. Just trying to get away from this horrible audio issue. But yeah, certain, certain tracks, places like Spa as well, where you've got the long uh, camel straight, camel straight, where you're going to do a lot of your overtaking. It can be very um, preferential really to try and set the car up in such a way that it might be different from your qualifying lap to your actual race um, setup just so that you can overtake in certain areas. You might not very well be as quick um, through the twisty section but as long as you can make an overtake along the, the straights that might be enough for you to be able to get ahead of another driver and unless he's got a much better setup to overtake you through the corners you might be able to still maintain a good speed through the corners but absolutely nail it on the straights so you can defend along the straights because you've got good top speed and you can overtake <coughs> so as we cross the line a pretty disappointing sixth place and a number of seconds away really from first place Slight, quite a disappointing run considering um, what the car is capable of really so you can see there we've got two Ginettas rounding out first place second place I think the Caterham another KTM sorry was in third place and then we've got the two, two um, Corvettes so on the run down to turn one then you can see probably probably should have held on to second gear um, obviously not trying to take any damage and obviously when we're racing against the AI, AI they can be somewhat unpredictable but coming out of turn one then a lot of cars all over the circuit really just really trying to find your feet even the Aston Martin. The Aston Martin did run quite well actually on the night. Uh, another driver Adam Shaw making good use of the um, Aston Martin. I've not tried that yet in the GT4 class. Definitely probably something that suits this shorter circuit. I think it's got a, quite a long sixth gear the Aston Martin. So I definitely get a good run up in on him here, just coming out of the last corner, which is where I just be able to uh, manage under braking to get get that pace, get that place taken. And then it's all really, it's pretty much downhill from there. There's no real movement forward or backwards, just maintaining good pace throughout the race. A couple of 139s here and there, and then we move on to another car. So let's look at what we can do to make some changes to this setup then. I spent a little bit of time creating a race setup, not particularly a long time. So if we look down at the toe, I've just taken out some of the toe. All these things are geared towards um, the change that I made in the aero. And we probably should have looked at the aero first, but I've just increased the anti-roll bar at the front of the car. I've softened the rear um, bump stops. I've taken out the anti-roll bar at the rear of the car. I've slightly softened the bumps from 12 down to 8. And we've got rid of from 9 all the way down to 2. 
on the rear wing. So all the changes that we've made to the rest of the car were because we're losing so much aero performance from the back of the car. We tried to make the rear of the car much softer, tried to get more mechanical grip so that we can get more straight line speed and try and attack along this start finish straight. So during the testing, trying to set up the car for this, I wanted to try and get the same feel for the car as having the same amount of downforce as having nine on the downforce, but having the straight line speed so that we can attack on these straights. So again, we get a fantastic start off the line into second gear straight away and we're taking one of these Corvettes even before we've reached turn one. So just being a bit tentative on the brakes, not wanting to get squeezed too much, a little bit of a touch there on the inside. Not sure if we've taken too much damage, but we're almost in the same position as we were on the previous race. So we've still got the race alongside this AMG uh, that we overtook on the first lap. A good battle through the first couple of corners with the AMG still alongside, so still using that radar make good use of it I know exactly where he is I know whether he's in front or he's alongside me good spotter that's what it's all about trying to make up the run up the inside he leaves me a little bit of room but he still carries a lot more speed around the outside and know he's ahead already so can we take him into this next coin we've got some good speed on the run up here probably not <coughs> we can try and force him into a different line but still the AI is pretty good when it I think the battles that I'm having with the AI are pretty competitive to be honest at 100% 9 Obviously we've lost some of that rear end downforce, but we've also gained the straight line speed from getting rid of some of that rear end. So braking a tiny bit before, carry as much speed through here as we can, we get a really good run on him up the hill, is he going to get out of the way? Squeeze through that little gap and we're well clear of him even before we're into the braking zone much more straight line speed so let's start making some headway then or can we start making some headway we're not being caught but from the car behind not having to worry so much now we're getting into six gear before turn one just a little bit before still a little bit unsure as to how much speed I can carry into turn one So on the way out, <laughs> we've already picked up a little track limits penalty. But obviously you get three track limits penalties, so use them wisely. Obviously not trying to uh, make too many um, errors off circuit, but sometimes making a little track error or getting a little penalty might be worth picking up in certain circumstances. Don't say I said that. <coughs> So braking just before the white line on the right hand side, get the car turned in nice and early, hug that inside kerb, loads of grip on the inside, let the car run nice and wide and as we come across the uh, kerb on the right hand side here, braking nice in a straight line if you can, try and keep, stop the car from sliding too much under braking. I do like to come back on the circuit here and then come back off the circuit, braking nice and early, carry as much momentum through the corner as you can use all that exit curb we've got a nice run up here not going to be able to do much with it maxing out in fourth gear just to little change into fifth or oh, very tight on the inside so we've got a nice nice and close to the car in front are we going to be able to make a move already on to lap two already we're not the corvette is uh, fast in a straight line Not a, it's not a Corvette, I'm sure it's not a Corvette, but I'm trying to think what it is. Is it a Mustang? Might be a Mustang. Why do I not know what this car is in front of me? But yeah, just trying to carry momentum through these corners. Up into third, down into second. Get the power down. Use all that kerb on the exit. Use some of the kerb on the right hand side, not too much of it because it can sometimes upset the car. He's got a little bit squirmy under acceleration there, we've got a nice run here, can we get it up, up on the inside here? We've got much more acceleration than before, 
carrying that speed through okay we've run a little bit further than needed but we've managed to get the place it's probably one of those Max Verstappen moves so that's one place that we never made in the previous um, previous iteration of the setup we just weren't ever catching any cars under acceleration little dab of the brake pedal loads more speed up this hill So we're already looking at 139.6, just almost into fifth gear and then we know we need to be coming back down the braking again. Nice run out of the last corner, not over, yet. not over yet at all. Obviously you can see we've got a lot more tyre pressure as well in the front of the car because we are sliding around a tiny bit more just through decreasing the amount of um, overall downforce that we've got in the car so some things to consider when, reduce, when reducing the downforce is what effect it might have on tyre wear but already up on this lap car feels really nice in this setup it really does but you just need to be aware of when you're on the brake pedal that you're not letting the car slide too much under acceleration it's not too bad even on traction control one seems really nice and handleable 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 i'm sure that's a word surely it handles very well <laughs> we're already looking at 139.5 pretty happy with those lap times so really nice and tight through the apex there shaves nearly two two tenths off the lap time a really tricky braking zone just so tentative round here it just really it feels like you're taking long longer through the corner than you think but it's a, it's a much quicker way than going a long way around the outside of that corner just being tight through the apex so just up into fifth gear and then we know we need to be coming down again a nice exit off the corner again and we're killing that lap time 139.2 really does feel much better on the set we can see the guy in first place setting a 139 dead still not sure whether I can carry fourth gear into this corner or not dropping down into third you can run so much wider on that exit So the Ginetta really does go quite well here as well. It's a very fun car to drive. I love the raspiness from the engine as you come up through the top range of the gearbox. It's got a nice little rasp as it finish out, finishes out the engine note of each gear. So I can't believe we're even up on this lap time as well. Another great lap. Really is fun to drive just before the line there we're braking <coughs> might not look like it on this video so getting nice and tight through this apex as well keep the car moving <coughs> early on the power little dab of brake as we come through here picking up some of this inside kerb a nice run up the hill again carrying much more speed decided not to shift into fifth gear want to get a nice tight apex through here get right underneath this Ginetta's rear wing <coughs> really enjoyed this race even though it's against the AI I really do enjoy the racing on the set of course a set of course a competition can we get him into turn one nowhere near close enough running wide you can see we're still not picking up a track infringement now it's great even watching these races back really do enjoy your set of course the competition it's second to none when it comes to racing on xbox So carrying loads of momentum, definitely catching this car under acceleration. 
starting to make him think I might make a move. So we know we seem to be quicker than this car on the on this section of the circuit. We've already overtaken one car as we carry more speed through here. Is it something that the AI struggle with? Got a beautiful run up the hill. Can we get him under braking? Pulling alongside him. Car on the right. Oh, it's tight, it's tight. He's Car got on the me right. on the exit, so I just get right underneath that rear ring. We are Ginetta. Right, Don't I know about it? Across the line then, just pulling out of the slipstream. Right. Got good acceleration. Just want to allow him a little bit on the outside of the corner. I know I'm going to run wide, just pushing him wide a little bit. We've got the corner. Clear or have right. we cuts to the inside to try and cover it off? Try and get me doing the the switch back. I was very conscious that he was going to just tap me at the rear of the, rear of the car then. I'm sure if you've got the AI set 100% aggression, he'd have just smashed right into the back of me, spun me round and finished my race off. I'm not saying that doesn't happen in real life, but <coughs> certainly frustrating when the AI just taps you at the rear. So from a setup that gave me sixth place, we found a setup with a few little tweaks, slightly different to the qualifying setup. Although I might very well use this in a qualifying setup, but it wasn't until I actually tried the qualifying setup in a race that I was a sitting duck down the start finish straight so there was nowhere that gave me an opportunity to accelerate and overtake something you really do need to consider when looking at your setups is it going to be just as competitive in the race or are you going to be able to make overtaking maneuvers by running a little bit less rear wing and be not being so competitive through the corners but you're able to make a move in some of the overtaking parts of the circuit so I really enjoyed that race even though um, the guy in the Ginetta took fastest lap I was pretty happy with a 139.1 one, I think <coughs> so over there on the left hand on the right hand side picking up third place thank you very much I'll take that two KTM's on the rostrum so we have a quick look at 139.2 one two, two, two 139.2's a really good start as well under acceleration quickly into second gear <coughs> we'll just have a quick look at these three overtaking maneuvers although we did pick up a tiny bit of damage I really wasn't sure how much damage we picked up but just happy to maintain good position through the start of the race <coughs> really I'm enjoying Valencia Whenever there's a new circuit on a set of course of competition, I just thoroughly enjoy them. I don't know what it is about this game, even when you go to Snetterton. Fantastic circuit when you spend a bit of time there. Probably be brilliant in the GT4 cars as well. So just getting a nice run up the hill. Not enough to get alongside, I don't think through this replay anyway but through the last corner carry much more speed through here and the, the overtakes almost done before we reach the top of the hill plenty of time to cut in front and take my, my line into the corner and out along the start finish straight carrying loads of speed down the start finish straight I'm not even sure if I could run less rear wing than two might be something worth revisiting but I thought I would revisit in this visit in this video because it was so apparent during my race um, that I needed more speed from the car really another overtaking maneuver mostly done under braking maybe a bit of a Max Verstappen dive up the inside I 
And then the final overtake of the night, or of the race, with the Ginetta to pick up P3. Again, it was a brilliant little battle with the Ginetta. I loved how he tried to make the comeback, uh, to cut back at the once he'd been overtaken, to sort of give me a, a feeling that he was going to try and get me up the inside. <coughs> really had to cover it off. I think he would have tried for it, to be honest. So I really do like how the AI don't just give up as soon as you've got past them. They will battle for the place. So again, just carrying more speed up the hill. Making the attack into the braking zone, but he doesn't give up. Still tries it, pushes the car around the outside, pulls back onto the circuit. And really no headway at all. I'm really tucked right underneath that rear wing of the Ginetta. Just a little pull off to the right hand side. And then as we dive into this turn one, gives me enough room on the inside. It makes me think he's going to switch back. I'm sure if I'd not covered that off, he'd have been in there. He's so close to tapping my rear end as well. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. I hope that gives you a bit of an insight into why you might possibly want to change uh, your setup from qualifying to race. Just to give you some or more of a competitive edge in the overtaking portions of a circuit. <coughs> um, I know a lot of guys that don't particularly do their own setups. Um, it certainly might give you just something to think about if you are looking at doing setups just how much thought can go into creating a setup and why you might change certain aspects of a setup to make you more competitive but yeah thanks for all your comments as well on all the videos thanks for still coming to the channel and making um, making use of all the content that I keep putting out there it really is good when I get time to do these videos. So quickly looking over the setup then. <coughs> the subtle adjustments. Everything really stemming from changing that rear wing from 9 to 2. Softening out the anti-roll bars. The uh, dampers. Softening out some of the suspension. Slightly stiffening the front of the car to increase rear grip. And just stopping the rotation so much using the rear toe. Just lessening that rear toe. But yeah, thanks for watching guys. As always, till next time. Ciao for now.